Okay, we are going to get started and I am going to start off, so I might as well center myself here. Welcome today. We're really thrilled to have everybody. Uh, we are recording this, so the recording will become available. So that's a good thing if you want to revisit what we go at over. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with what John and I do and the bendable body method, I'm just going to cover that briefly. And then John's going to get into the main topic, which today is stretching and walking. And when we talk about walking, we mean any kind of walking, but we're kind of generally referring to what I would call probably the most popular pastime out there. And John's looking at everybody right now and can see all of you. So if you want to throw a hand up and tell us how many of you love to take a walk, whether it be on your own, listening to music or with a friend or um, you know, with your dogs and how many of you, okay. So a lot of hands are going up, John, uh, Yeah, pretty much everybody. Right. And, um, like how many of you do it for exercise, um, and you know, physical exercise and, or to like blow off steam, to get away from your computer, to get out and get fresh air. How many people do it for that reason? How many people, a lot of people. Lots yes. of hands up, less, less. Okay. Okay. Um, but I mean, I think statistically what we know is that walking is an extremely popular pastime, extremely popular form of exercise and extremely popular way to socialize, blow off steam, et cetera. And so it's something that needs to be talked about how to do it in a way that you don't in injure yourself doing it and that it doesn't actually make you worse off which is not your intention. And also so that you can keep doing it because it's one of those exercises that you can do into a pretty old age. So that's what we're talking about today. We're super excited to get into this. Um, we have a blog post on this. It's gotten a huge amount of attention. So we thought it was a good topic to do a freebie on. So that's, that's why we're here this Sunday. But let's just briefly talk about resistance stretching just to give you a touch of background if you are new to our method or if you need a refresher. So at Bendable Body, we teach what we call resistance stretching. And it's a very descriptive term. You resist the stretch. Okay. So if you think about traditional stretching or yoga, you don't resist the stretch. You passively lengthen into an end range and try and lengthen further. Right. So that's what the main conception of stretching is. And probably all of you are defining stretching in that way. It's pretty much how everybody defines stretching. We do not do that at all, ever, never, never, never. Okay. <laughs> so what we do is called resistance stretching and you literally internally resist that lengthening. Okay. And you're going to get a chance to experience it. So I'm not going to try and teach you how to do it verbally right now. You're going to actually physically get to try it in a little bit, but the key is resistance. You are resisting the stretch internally. You're still lengthening a muscle, but you're resisting that lengthening. And the reason we do it isn't to just be annoying and make you crazy. <laughs> we do it because it changes fascia. It restructures fascia directly. Now, just a quick one-on-one -on, -one on what is fascia. Fascia is the connective tissue in your body. It's surrounding and penetrating every single muscle, every single muscle fiber. So if your goal is to have strength and mobility, which is pretty much everybody's goal, and you want to perform well, whether it be at tennis, golf, piano playing, cooking, sewing, breathing, no matter what it is, your fascia needs to be healthy. You can't drop it out of the equation. And it is getting dropped out of the equation in pretty much every single exercise method out there, okay? So the fact that you are here, congratulations, you are way ahead of the game. You have to address your fascia and resistance stretching targets it directly and restructures it on a cellular level so that your muscles can work better. And that is the definition of both strength and flexibility. It's a muscle that moves fully through a range of motion and with power. The two go hand in hand. They are not separate. So if you have separate methods for strengthening and stretching, you're missing the boat. Okay. So that's the background on what we do. And I hope I don't sound too egotistical, but we think it's pretty important. Okay. And actually there is, I've had so many people send me the article that came out in the New York times on fascia today. And John and I read it and it's great for beginners introduction to fascia. It's great for beginners introduction to fascia. That's the party comment. So, okay. 
let's get started. I'm going to hand it over to John so that he can get into stretching and walking. Okay. Oh, one more thing, save your questions for the end, unless it's logistical, in which case I'll respond to them in the chat. But if you could save your questions for the end, we will have Q&A at the end. Okay. Okay. So walking and resistance stretching. Uh, how many of you, uh, first of all, think uh, the impact uh, and the safety of walking verse is, is less than tennis, running, basketball, or yoga? Hand up. Hand up. Sita's got the eyes on it. How many of you think it's less? Oh, okay. Yeah, definitely. We got so we don't have too many people raising their hands. Few. So now physically walking versus tennis or basketball or running, there's more, an, it's more of an impact the other sports uh, initially. But because of the repetitive motion of walking uh, and the lack of body participation, uh, it produces more injuries. And in the feet, knees, hips, low back, some people can feel it in the shoulders and in the neck. Uh, but plantar fasciitis is a big thing. Hip joint problem is a big thing. Um, uh, and the knees, of course, uh, are very impactful. Now, I'm going to say about 10 years ago, a uh, bunch of stretchers were hanging out and thought, well, what do we want to get really, really good at? Everyone picked something to get good at. Well, all I was doing was spending like 12, 13, 14 hours a day at the studio stretching people. So it's like, I have no time to do anything, but I walk to the subway back and forth. So I'll pay attention to my walking. So I focused in on my walking, focused in on my body. And I got the, not only the inside perspective, like what it did to the body and the neck and the arms move. And there's one arm move, the other arm doesn't move. One leg's turning out, you, you get you get into your body. But I started to realize what impact uh, the asphalt, the gravel, the concrete, the different types of concrete, the different types of asphalt all had coming into the body. So let me explain uh, before uh, we go any further, we'll start stretching after this, um, what the movement just at the hip joint, like what is happening while we're walking and ball and socket, femur goes into the hip joint, femur with its socket, my fist is a socket, and here, uh, my, the, the ball, and this is the socket. So it goes in and it's rotating. It's going back and forth. So is that your hip joint? A hip joint, hip joint. That's what that's doing there. When we start to advance, leg starts to- You mean walk. Flat, we'll start to walk, advance. Flex, right? That first move, the leg starts to naturally externally rotate. Then as we lift it up and go forward, it internally rotates. And then as we land, it goes back and begins to externally rotate. So the movement, one move, one leg doing that has an external rotation component, internal rotation component, and then it begins to externally rotate. So it's doing a figure eight. I've only experienced it briefly on my right leg. I'm going to say three or four years ago at the beginning of the pandemic, you know, focusing on the walking again. And I could realize that's what was happening, but it's hard. It's really subtle. Okay. Now with tennis, basketball, yoga, fitness classes, there's a lot of this, there's a lot of moving, there's the whole body's turning around, you're doing upper, lower. So the whole body's working in concert, walking. It's all happening in the legs and the repetitive motion affects the hip mostly. And because uh, the body's not, we're not doing that, right? Uh, you know, some people get the arms moving, but the spine rotates uh, and flexes and extends. It does all of that, but it doesn't do a lot of that with walking. Also, I noted, because I wore, 
once I wore running shoes, usually I wear those three millimeter Vivo barefoot flat uh, soled shoes. So the impact on your body with what you wear and when the injuries start to happen or it's the feet start to hurt, the hips start to hurt, we go and a lot of times it's recommended that we get orthotics or we get more cushion on our shoe. So we're running away from the symptom. We're running away from the pain and not addressing the symptom, but we're putting patches on it. Let's make it more fun. Let's make it, uh, okay. So can you just explain a little bit more why it is that walking is harder on your body than like something like tennis or running? Cause I so don't get it yet. Okay. Um, I'll give an analogy is a real life analogy. Uh, I've worked with a lot of athletes. I've also had the opportunity to work with a lot of musicians from the Boston Pops. And you know, about a dozen or so of these wonderfully talented musicians came in, flautists, pianists, drummers, um, violinists. Um, now they're making very sophisticated movements hours a day for years and years and years. And this is what they're doing. <laughs> this is what they're doing. We have never seen such intense scar tissue in humans as we have in those musicians. Uh, athletes, professional football players, professional baseball players, professional basketball players, swimmers, runners, they've done it for 40 years. They were, weren't in near the condition as the musicians, our hearts almost broke for these people. Um, so are you saying that more movement gets dispersed throughout the body? More movement gets dispersed throughout the body. Um, and walking, the whole body's kind of moving, but the joint that's taking the stress and the repetitive movement is here. And let's show you. So what do we want to do? We want to prepare for our walk and then we want to recover from our walk. Okay. And these are simple. A lot of you know these already. Uh, and they're effective. We do them on road trips. Uh, we do them occasionally on our walks because we walk our dogs every day, you know, and so we're, you know. Um, so if a person likes to take a walk for like 45 minutes, when are you going to recommend that they do these stretches you're about to show them? And what are the stretches for? The stretches are for uh, the hip joint, knees and feet, right? And the low back because that's where the symptoms show up. And because you want to keep doing the activity and you want it to be really enjoyable, you know, because um, if it feels good, uh, you want to do more and more of it. But the tendency is when things, you end up doing less and less because of stiffness or pain or things that show up. So the first, we can all do this now. Um, first, you we have three hamstrings. The, on the back of the leg. They all attach to the bottom of the pelvis right here. Two of them come down and attach to the lower leg below the knee on the inside. And then the one, the lateral, comes down and attaches to the lower leg on the outside. Now, take note that those are the only muscles in the body, those three hamstrings that cross two joints. Every other muscle goes, crosses one joint. Every other muscle crosses one joint. Every other muscle crosses one joint. Hamstrings, there's a, quite a bit of sophistication between, you know, the ankle, knee, foot, hip, okay? And those hamstrings allow that to happen, but we're using them to walk. We're using them uh, to run. We're using them for everything, basically, primarily, their toughest tissue in the body. So you want to they want to be stretched this way, okay? So the first one is the medial hamstring, and we do it in this order because medial, central, and lateral. So you do the medial first. Just take a little step forward, and if you have a chair nearby or something to hold on to, you know, if you're in the park, it'll be a bench or a tree. You want to keep your balance because we're doing resistance. We're not trying to keep our balance. So the, my front leg, if you can see, is just a little bit forward of my left leg this is the target leg there's bends in my knees gently i'm going to turn that front foot in slightly now you can go as wide as you want or as narrow as you want but pull that heel 
of that left leg. Can you see me okay in the picture? Yeah, I can see you. And everybody has the option to turn their video on and I'm looking. And so if you're doing it wrong, I'll let you know. You start in the upright position. You pull that heel back. It's going to go in the direction of your uh, right foot. And that's great. And keep pulling that heel back while you fold forward and relax on the way up. Pull. The, we're going to do, we're all going to work on the left leg. And we're all going to do, you know, about eight or 10 stretches on each muscle group on this left leg. And we're going to check it out. And we're going to see the impact it has. Too fast, Pat. Pull slow the that heel down. down. Remember to get into the resistance. Pull that heel, pull that heel. And you can feel that muscle tightening and resisting. Resist, resist. You know, you can check, you know, for you who have been followers for a while. You want to tuck that tailbone, keep those ribs in uh, to reduce any substitution and to increase the resistance nicely. Okay, okay. Now, we're going to go right to the central hamstring. Now, the foot straight ahead and the legs are much closer together. Same bend in the knees, foot's in front, my left foot's in front of my right, and I'm pulling that heel back, pulling that heel back as we fold forward, relax on the way up. Pull that heel back, pull that heel back. And again, we're going to do about eight or 10. Fully resist. And I like, if you can, I don't always do it, but I flex my foot when I'm thinking about it because that'll help give you a better contraction in the hamstring. Resist, 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 and let it go and come back up. So maybe talk, John, about how far forward people need to bend because you don't need to go too far. You're only bending so long as you can resist maximally. I'm seeing a lot of you go way too far. This is not focused on end range. Yeah, this yeah. Is Changing focused on the fascia resistance. is a resistant act. So I'm pulling my heel back, pulling my heel back, pulling my heel back, pulling my heel back, pulling my And that's it. I don't, I mean, I could bend down to here, but I have no resistance. Right, so resist, let's do a few more. A few more, keep those ribs in. We're gonna do this, this is a central hamstring. Okay, okay. Lateral, let's go right to the lateral. Same thing as brain, central hamstring, but we're turning the foot out, turning the leg out a little bit, bend that and then pull it back. Now we're getting the lateral hamstring. Now we're getting the lateral hamstring. And, you know, uh, we're talking about preparing for the walk, and then we're talking about recovering from the walk. So what does that mean? Stretch before and after? Stretch, well, before and after will be great. Um, so do it any way you want. If you do it before, you're going to have a better walk. If you do it after, you're going to take the event out of your body and recover more quickly. What if you only have time for one? What would you recommend? After. Why? Because you want to take the event out of your body. So it would lessen the chance of injury. Lessen saying. the chance of injury. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much time do you think you need to spend? Um, well, you can think of five to 10 minutes before. Okay, let's check that out. You know, just check that leg out. And, you know, walk around your space and just, you know, be in your body. You know, you can... Wherever your attention goes, right away, my attention went to my feet. My left foot is nice and soft. Uh, my, uh, my left hip is nice and open. I have more rotation in the hip joint. I can feel that. I can feel the tight knee on the right. I can feel space in the knee on the left. I feel actually the shoulder relaxed on the left, and it's back a little bit in space. How many of you can feel that that right leg is working a bit better than the left the leg? The left leg. We did the oh, left. sorry. The left leg is working a bit better than the right when you walk around. Okay. And can you so, identify that if you were taking a walk, that left leg would be less okay. likely to get injured? Which leg do you want to take on your walk? The one we stretched or the one we didn't stretch? Now think a little further. The one we didn't stretch, this is the one you want to focus on just for a moment. That's the leg we're taking on every walk every day. That's the leg we're taking on every walk. We get, get up, we have our breakfast, or we go, we walk first, or we have our routine, we meet our friends, we do our steps. But we now we have a reference. 
I, I, I want to walk with that leg. I want to walk with, and I know if I walk with that leg, now think about walking with the other leg. If you keep pushing that, keep pushing that, keep walking on that, that doesn't feel good. So eventually it's, not, it's going to feel really terrible because it's not in a good position, just because the tissue's tight, the tissue's dense, it's tense and tense on the front, dense on the back. Dense is harder to change than the front. So that's why we focus on the back. They're really important hamstrings. That's an easy thing to do. Now you can think of it instead of five or 10 minutes, you can think of it. I'm going to do three sets of 12 medial, central, and lateral. Three sets of 12. You can do them any way you want. You know, uh, you can do six, eight, 10, 12. You can do 20 reps on the first set, 10 reps on the second, six, or however you want to do it. Um, really important for you know, to make the walking more enjoyable. Now, if you're really ambitious or you only want to do it once, maybe do it in the middle of your walk. Say you have a routine and it's a half hour, 45 minute walk every day through a big, big park or something. You want to stop and sit or you want to stop at a bench and you start doing your hamstrings. You can just do one set on each leg and then continue your walk and see how it feels. Um, what happens, John, if, because this is something I do, and I bet a lot of people out there do it. What happens if you're on a walk with a friend and you're talking and your friend wants to walk really fast? What would you recommend in that situation? Uh, just, just, well, are you, so you're aware that your friend's walking fast? <laughs> yeah. Your friend wants to, your friend's okay, like that's a speed number walker. One. Are you aware? Like if you're walking with a friend, are you aware like they're walking too slow or they're walking fast? Is it they're walking too fast because you don't want to walk fast or that your body doesn't? They're you walking the body? fast because they want to get exercise the way so many people do. Well, I would say the slower you go, the faster you'll get. So talk about that a minute. So in order for muscles to develop or, you know, uh, to get stronger and to get faster, if you just keep going fast, 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 that doesn't mean you're going to get fast. Actually, it will mean you get slower. Muscles contract by going slow. Uh, notice resistance stretching. When you pull that heel back, it's almost like a halting movement, right? When you pull that heel back, it's really hard to go fast. I mean, it's, I mean, I'm trying to go fast, but when the muscles contracting, it, it slows you down. So now if you're walking fast and you're, you're zipping along, are those muscles, what are those muscles doing? They're not doing a whole lot. It's going right into the joint. Mm. So if you go slower, you're giving the, the muscles an opportunity to contract. Um, I mean, I know what I do if I'm on, because it's tricky. You know, it's like you want to get your exercise in. You want to get outside and get some fresh air. And it's motivating to go with someone because it gives okay. you an opportunity to be social and actually do it. You might not even do it otherwise. And so like, what do you do in that situation? If you're with someone where they just want to go super fast, what I usually try and do is find like a medium paced set. And then also really important in that scenario to make sure that you do some stretches afterwards to take it out of your body. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's really fun uh walking and being in your body just kind of like enjoying the exercise because you know you don't have to get anywhere really fast you know you're not the, the walk is the destination whenever you and i take the dogs on a walk you're always trying to get me to slow down See, yeah. so john's the yeah. voice of let's slow it down so maybe when you're on your walk with your friends you have the option of being like let's slow it down and so address this john will you burn as many calories and will you get a workout if you walk slower rather than faster well people would have to check it out and see because uh, if you go slower your muscles will contract more and that you know it won't happen right away but you know over time it'll they'll get better and better um, I mean, we have these devices that tell us how many calories we burn. So you could test it out. We would love to see the feedback. Um, because a lot of people that have these devices and that come to a bendable body stretch class for the first time, their heart rate is higher than it's ever been. Their fat burning is higher than it's ever been. 
And, you know, they're big walkers. Some of them are runners. Some of them do fitness classes, CrossFit. They do all these classes and they come to bendable body and do resistance stretching for 45 minutes. And it's like, what, 44 out of 45 minutes, 42 out of 45 minutes of fat burning. So, um, you know, just to give you an idea of the exercise we do, it's really, you know, it's really strenuous and it feels great and it, it doesn't cause pain and it reverses everything. Let's do the other leg. So let's learn these three stretches for the medial hamstring for the pancreas, central hamstring for the brain and lateral hamstring for the bladder. So the first one we're going to do is pancreas, medial hamstring. So I like to take, create a little bit of width between the legs, bend both knees, turn that foot in, turn that leg in a little bit. And so pull that heel back toward the back leg, keep pulling it back, resist as you fold forward, relax as you come up. And breathing in and out through your nose is a healthy way to breathe. Pull the heel back, pull the heel back, keep your hips level, hips square, tailbone tucked, ribs in your body, head moving with your torso. Let it go. Resist on the way down, relax on the way up. Stretching our medial hamstring. You know, how much of a bend do you want to have in your leg? You could change the angle of the knee. You could go a little wider. And then you can feel what's going on in the muscle you're stretching with your hand. Let's do a couple more. Okay. All right. Central hamstring. Let's go right to the central hamstring. Little step forward, bend those knees, foot straight ahead, and then pull that heel right back. Pull that heel right back as you fold forward. Relax on the way up. Resist on the way down. Again, breathing in and out through our nose. How much of a bend is in your knee? Make sure the knee really needs to bend for the hamstring to contract and to address and change that fascia in our hamstrings. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Pull that heel back. Pull that heel back. Relax on the way up. Got a couple more here. Now we've got the chair nearby. It's really helpful to hold on to something because if you're not holding on to something, you're you're trying to balance yourself and the resist, it's harder to create the resistance. So I'm just gently holding on to the chair here. Okay. Okay. Lateral hamstring. Turn the leg out. Turn the leg out. Keep a bend in the knee. Pull the heel back. Tuck that tailbone. Now that's the lateral hamstring. Yes, it's totally fine to feel it in the front of the opposite thigh because that leg is pressing forward, Lori. Um, you want to make sure that your focus is on the heel pressing back, but it's okay if you feel it. At the front yeah, I can the feel thigh. the quad burning a little bit on the helper leg. Yeah, it's creating the oppositional force and the stability. Stay with it. Stay with it. We're doing the lateral hamstring, the bladder muscle group. Pull that heel back. Pull that heel back. Stay with it. A couple more. Keep the tailbone tucked. It might decrease your range of motion, but it'll be a better stretch. Don't stick the butt out, in other words. Okay. All right. What happened there? Relief. <laughs> Check that out. What do you notice? Do we like the changes? I like the changes. I like the feeling of that leg. And also remember that you've been stretching with us for a while, some of you. These are cumulative effects. You know, uh, a little bit every day builds up. A little bit for a few days, taking a few days off, coming back. Taking time off, you don't lose the gains that you've gotten. You know, to the extent that we've resisted and changed the tissue, you keep that going forward. Easier to breathe. The diaphragm, I can feel, go a little lower on the breaths. Foot softened up a little bit. That hip opened up. 
Um, now, imagine doing this before and after. Now, I say five to 10 minutes. If you want to do it for one minute, if you want to do it something, it's going to make you feel better. And uh, so we have stretches to do before, during, and after your walk. And what we want to do, you now we can add two stretches. They're both standing. So we just emphasize and stretch the hamstrings, really important muscles for all activity. Can you repeat what those, the organs, the three hamstrings target? Sure. Lateral hamstring is bladder. Uh, and it's great. If you're getting up many times a night to go to the bathroom and you start stretching that hamstring, you'll sleep through the night. It happens to many of us. It works great. Brain for the central hamstring, pancreas for the medial hamstring. Um, and whatever those organs do, uh, the phys physiological effects are really good and they, they improve. Now, the next two stretches, uh, one for the quads and then one for the outside of the shoulders. And I'll tell you why these two in particular. Every So every time we move, the whole body's a part of the movement. You know, throwing... Uh, catching, squatting, jumping, and the whole body. But there's a primary muscle that's associated with walking, and it's the quads, stomach, advance, right? So let's do about a dozen of these stretches. It's a stand. It'll be new to most of you. Um, I don't think we have it on the membership. And you're recommending a standing stretch so that they could conceivably um, do it in the middle of Yeah, I'm recommending a standing stretch. So, you know, because... Yes, in the middle of your walker. So what we want to do is the leg we're going to stretch. So I'm going to do the right leg. Put it a little forward of my body, just a little forward. And I'm going to turn the leg in slightly. You can leave it straight or turn it in. So I'm going to turn it in a little bit. Okay, I'm going to start with the leg somewhat straight. Right? And then I'm going to, you can think of your two feet pushing away from each other. But I'm, I think of that front foot pushing forward. And then you can feel the front of your leg tighten up a little bit. Keep pushing that foot forward while you lunge forward. And then relax and come back to the start. So at the start, your leg is almost straight. You're pushing that foot forward, pushing that foot forward, pushing that foot forward as you lunge forward. And you're relaxing on the way back. Let's do about a dozen. So my feet are fairly wide up. Uh, they're not too wide. They're a little, got about six inches in width, but you can see the length. I got a pretty good amount of distance between the front leg and the back leg. So I'm resisting as I go forward, relaxing as we go back. Resist, push that foot forward, relax on the way back. So the foot's flat. The front foot is flat. Let it go. And again, keep those ribs in, tuck that tailbone. It helps increase the resistance here. Relying on this chair for balance. Let's do about four or five more. Stay with it. So I'm seeing some amazing questions and we're going to respond to all of them. Just sit tight for those of you that have put your questions in the chat. Okay, now I like this stretch. Okay. <laughs> so does so does Julie. Oh, that's so a good one. Like okay, so we'll check it out. What does that do? Oh, that's nice. It's like a cleaner movement. Do you feel that? Subtle, but that right leg. Yes, Stephanie, that's what you're doing. It, it it's it's advancing where the left leg's advancing, but it's kind of being dragged. something in the way. It feels a touch of dragging heavier. The left leg feels heavier. This right leg is lighter and it's coming through more easily. And I do notice it also in the hip joint. I can only, I can just gently feel that rotation in the hip joint on the right. So that's a stomach stretch. And that's the primary muscle we use in walking, running, dancing. And so you can think of it when you walk, you use up a lot of that stomach muscle. So if you do a stretch during or after, it's like you're replenishing it so you can keep walking, right? 
So let's do that and let's learn this little stomach stretch, this quad stretch for our left leg. And so you can see the distance between my front and back. Now, whatever's comfortable for you, I, I created uh, a more this length. A pop, this is a legs. popular stretch. We got to put it on the membership. Yeah, yeah. So I turn, think it is. turn that foot in a little bit, press that foot forward. And immediately, I feel the quad tighten up and then lunge forward and then relax on the way back. Got to be really careful of the knee. Let it go. Press the foot forward, press the foot forward, press the foot forward, relax on the way back. And yet, oh, I like when you keep those ribs in, I feel the force increase quite a bit. Tuck that tailbone, keep those ribs in. Maybe you want to drop those shoulders a little bit. Not about range, it's about resistance. If you're feeling it in the front of the knee joint, something's not right. Uh, do less range. Because what's, if you feel in the knee joint, what's happening is that the hamstrings on the back aren't shortening. And so you want to do more hamstring stretches. But in the meantime, do less you, range. Yeah, do less range. Like you you can just go a little bit in range where your knee doesn't go over your foot. Let's do a few more. Breathing in and out through your nose. Stay with it. Uh, foot maybe turned in slightly. It's kind of weird people were watching us like what are we doing <laughs> you know if we don't know we're resisting we're making these really kind of weird movements okay okay check it out shake it out oh, relief again yeah that leg is just swinging forward a little more quickly more easily And I also noticed when I did the right leg up in the right jaw, because the meridian for the stomach goes up, up, up over the nipple into the throat and into the jaw. And it's great for TMJ. Uh, so that's the stomach stretch. And that's the primary muscle for walking. Um, one more for your uh, this little walking routine, large intestine. Large intestine is the muscle in the upper body that uh, has a similar position and movement as the quads. So let's do large intestine. Let's do about a dozen on one side. So we're putting our arm, everybody knows this stretch, arm up in the air, about shoulder height, maybe a little higher, grab the elbow. We're stretching back here. So move your elbow back and your hand pulls it across against resistance and you relax and go back out to the start again. Resist. As you pull and relax on the way back. We're pulling to center. Pull, pull, pull. Relax on the way back. Against resistance. So the helping hand's working pretty hard to get the arm to center. And keep those ribs in your body. I have my knees gently bent so I can relax my pelvis. Too fast and not enough resistance, Pat. Going way too fast. So we're going to do about a dozen. We're about halfway through. And of course, we'll check it out. Let it go. You can relax the hand and wrist of the arm you're stretching. You might have a little more range that you could do, Ruby. I mean, I'm not sure I'm not in your body, but it looks like you might have more range. Okay. 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 Feels good in the shoulder. Uh, ooh. <laughs> I like, I like, can you feel now? how the upper body interfaces with that side of the torso now is contracting and going back in space. And I can feel like a rhythm and a coordination between the shoulder and the leg. And I don't feel that on the uh, left. And I feel the right leg moving more easily in the hip joint. And this one feels like it got tight again. Can people feel how stretching the arm helped the leg walk? Give us a thumbs up. Well, it yes. helped the leg, but awesome. it helps the walking in general, helps the body and get more of the body involved in the walk. Because this feels like a bit, a bit of a cement block up here. Yes, Eileen. And it's kind of affecting, this isn't really participating. And then, 
Okay, large intestine, left arm. We're going to get to all the questions that are not Large technical. intestine, left arm. We're going to do Stay about a dozen us. over here. To balance ourselves out. Again, we're going to grab that elbow. Starting, uh, we're resisting by taking the elbow, moving it back. But to help our hands pulling it across against resistance, we let go of the resistance and go back to the start. Breathing in and out through our nose. So is that helper hand pulling the arm to center, Stephanie? Because it wants to be gripped around the elbow joint and pull it to center pull. against resistance. Yeah, we're not pushing the inside. We're pulling the outside of the elbow. And it should be working pretty hard. And the, one of the reasons we have you do this stretch standing, if you can, is because the whole body can help you generate resistance. Now, if you can't stand, no big deal. You'll still get a result. Okay. The stretching is great. The relief you get in your body feels such. Yeah, that that helped the hip. There's it's it's easier movement in the hip. Um, and and the torso is getting a little more involved that in that side. So this that's a nice upper body stretch to do because it completes the quads, which is what moves us and advances us forward when we walk. So this was a really to get you to think about walking as it like a pretty intense activity. Even if you saunter, the repetitive motion goes into you and you kind of want to treat it like you'd warm up to play tennis or you warm up to play your sport or you warm up to do anything because um, you want to keep doing it. You want to keep enjoying it. So can we answer questions? Yeah, we can definitely there? answer questions. Why don't you be in front of the screen and I'll kind of throw them at you and we can tag team okay. them. I just kind of want to summarize a little bit though. So, you know, what we were trying to get across in this workshop is A, walking is a big deal. And so the conception that it's a low impact, easy exercise that anyone can do is kind of false. Okay. And we know that to be true because well, the feedback we get from people, from walkers that, you know, the, 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 the knees, hips, things knees hurt, down. things start to hurt. And then you start doing it less and less. But the other side of it is it's such a great thing to be able to do. And we all love to do it. So what do we do? How do we, how do we reconcile this? And there's a couple things. Is it ideal to speed walk? Is it ideal to walk fast? No. If you're going to, what do you do? Shorten up your pace. What else can you do no matter what pace you're walking? Stretch before, after, during. If you can only pick one, do it after. So you take it out of your body. Another thing that you, you reminded me there, um, the stride. A lot, a lot of strides are just, and even mine, I catch myself a lot, just a little too long. Yeah. You know? Um, because again, the muscle contracts through a range of motion and we generally go a little further than our muscles are able to contract. And then you're like in danger zone. And that means it goes by danger zone. You mean the movement starts to go in a joint and there's wear and tear one. It goes into the joint. Number two, when a muscle lengthens and it doesn't contract, the body responds by patching that up with white blood cells, dense fascia. So you're creating fascia stiffness you know yeah so uh you know that's all and you'll get stronger by shortening up the range because a couple of people asked a couple of things like like what's our stance on power walking what do you do if you're with someone who quote unquote wants to get their wants to get their steps in and that's all kind of pointing to the direction of speed walking walking really fast trying to like you know get your metabolism well, boosted. Like, and, and so I think John and I each have a different answer. Why don't you answer? And then I'll answer. I mean, if you can power walk, I, I would do some short sprints. So I, rather, so your rather answer is rather walk, than power walk, I mean, you would able do sprints. To power walk and you, you sprint. Why? Well, because the whole body's firing and uh, your cardio will go way up and you don't have to do it as long. Less um, likely to get injured. Less likely to get less injured. Less repetitive. Um, 
And so what I would say to that, so if I were on a walk, cause I, John doesn't really walk socially other than with me and the dogs. And I don't know that I would call that social, <laughs> but I do, it's I love to go on walks walk. with my girlfriends. And so what would I do in that situation? I would shorten up my stride significantly. And I would probably piss the person off that I'm walking with a little bit because it would slow us down a bit, but they would deal with it and they would just slow down a little. You know, and if I started to feel it going into my hip, I would shorten my stride up even more and I would probably slow down a little more or into my knee. So I would be conscious. I wouldn't ditch the event like John probably would. Like you probably would never go power walking or speed walking or on a walk with someone that was all concerned about their steps, correct? Well, I went on a walk with you guys at one time and y'all were going too fast. And so what did you do? Um... I burned the forest down. No, no, I, I, you know, it was just went on a walk. But it, so like I do it almost every week and that's what I do. You know, it's not a perfect solution, but it is a solution and it is something you can do. And it's simple, slow it down a little bit and decrease the width or the length of your stride significantly and let the person you're with adjust. If they get 50 less steps in that 45 minutes, they'll survive. I promise. And they'll still want to be your friend. Okay, so that hopefully addresses the power walking. Somebody's asking, can you have shoes on when you walk? Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, I, I always have shoes on. Um, Does it make it better? Because this is a big thing. Look at them, not me. Does it make it better to keep on getting cushiony shoes? Like, like the higher the cushion, the better. Personal experience with uh, running shoes, because um, I wore, again, those like Vivo Barefoot three millimeter uh sole shoes for about two years then one day all my shoes were wet i had to put on a pair of nike trainers first thing i noticed my hamstrings didn't contract they completely didn't fire and i was like whoa so if any if anything raises the heel higher than the ball of the foot and the higher it goes the hamstrings stop firing I, I was, I was flabbergasted. I didn't know I wore running shoes my whole life. I thought they were the most comfortable thing on the planet. So is it safe to say, John, that when you put on those cushiony shoes, you immediately feel less pain in your foot, but you're making the symptom that's causing the pain in your foot. I, I, I didn't have any pain to reference. No, but a lot of people put on more cushioned shoes. Oh, to get rid of the pain in, the in their foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's what they're doing. Got to change those hamstrings. Because I recommended the shoes to a client way back when. And she was a former collegiate sprinter, but she had hip problems. So when she put on these Vivo Barefoot, they hurt her feet. So I said, just walk around the house in the shoes to get used to them. Because if the feet hurt, the hamstrings need to change. If hip hurts, hamstrings need to change. So knee hurts, hamstring hurts. So it's like, you know, is a more cushiony shoe going to make your foot feel a little better in the immediate? But is it going to help the problem long term? It's going to make it worse. Well, think about the foot. The foot has an arch. The foot is probably the most sophisticated piece of architecture on the planet. Okay, seriously, with all those bones and all that structure. And it's an arch, right? It's an arch. Arches are weight bearing so the more we cushion and push up we're weakening that foot over and over and over again it's hiding the symptoms it's do it they have to that's a weight bearing structure so ideally barefoot but i don't go barefoot i mean i walk in the backyard a little bit barefoot but you want to get rid of those cushioned arches they're really because the hamstrings are going to contract less and less Symptoms are going to maybe subside for, you know, weeks or months, but then they're going to show up somewhere else. Okay. That was totally clear. All right. Um, uh, Ruby was feeling tightness in the ankle and calf and foot on the non-stretched foot. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, you can feel it anywhere. Different people are going to feel it in different places, but it's still need You're needing to go to the source, which in that instance was certainly the hamstrings. Um, so we answered that power walking question. We answered the getting the steps in question. Uh, we answered that, um, poles. Okay. So this is a good question. After a couple of falls, I've started using walking poles as I walk around my neighborhood. Any thoughts on using a pole? It seems to me that engage, it helps me engage my upper body with the poles. I love it. I recommend poles to a few people and they, they get insulted. 
I'm really? not, they're like, I'm not there yet. <laughs> I'm like, well, you, you're going to get there sooner than you think. So why don't you use them now and start using your arms? I think they're cool. I, I like the idea. Okay. Just awesome. for what you said, to get the arms involved, the whole body involved, you know, and use them. That, that's cool. Lots of people loving that quad stretch. Okay, Len. So then I'm going to do my best. I feel like we kind of have answered your question, but I feel like there's more to it. So I often walk fairly quickly to increase metabolism and burn calories, not to mention getting someplace on time. So Len's a New Yorker. We get that. Then he adds, I am not able to reconcile the benefits of quick walking and the benefits of these movements. So I don't understand that question. Do you mean like like which one should you choose? And we're asking you to choose. Well, I mean, yeah, that's what he means. So like, uh, which, <laughs> so I feel like you need to find a happy medium. I also okay. feel like you need to pay attention to your body. You know, do what you need to do. Do uh, you, you, th These stretches will help you get there faster. You can walk as fast. You can walk 15% faster when you start doing stretches. And if that's what you want to do, I mean, the truth of the matter do. is if you're going to want to walk fast and a lot, you have to stretch more. It's like, you're spending more money. You're eating at a five-star restaurant, every meal rather than McDonald's. Like that's the truth. And your body's not going to lie. It's going to show up in the knees. It's going to show up in the hips. It's going to show up somewhere. Um, you know, so you, you, you've got to manage that, but we'd be lying to you if we didn't say that walking really fast, wasn't going to have a wear and tear. It will. Well, okay. Now the other part of that is that, you know, if you're really in your body and you're doing everything we do can develop our body and make it better and better walking, repetitive motions, everything we do. If we're paying attention really closely and focusing on what needs to be addressed. But and that's like a, that's like a deep meditation. Yeah, I know, and, and that's, I know. that's and that's I, odd. So I, I don't do that. I did that a little bit when I walked in the past <laughs> some years ago, you know, figuring out and paying attention, but it's hard to do. You, your mind's distracted all the time. So, so you know, like the, the obvious things lend to put in place. And what you're asking is I, I think a really, really common rubbing point for a lot of people. And people walk for the exact same reasons that you're listing and they don't want to give them up for the exact same reasons that you're listing. And so like if we, you know, what, what we would recommend is, okay, walk fast. You got to shorten up your stride. You got to like really, really put an effort into shortening up your stride. And if you feel it going into a joint, you need to adjust. Cause it's not getting better. It's getting worse. Don't ignore it. That would be the second thing and stretch. You got to stretch, you know, and maybe focus on the after to take it out. You know, that's, you that's what we would walk, say. Breathing in and out through your nose is healthy too. That'll improve the health. Um, athletes are starting to do that now. Consciously. Yeah. So people are told Anita, uh, the first stretch we did, I felt the other leg heavier when I first walked and tested. That's so awesome. Um, Eileen, my right hip was strained yesterday at the end of a 12 mile bike ride. I know the fascia is jacked up hard and very sore. What do you, what do you suggest to relieve the pain? So for a bike ride, 12 mile bike ride, what would you have Eileen do for hips hurting? Pancreas and stomach. Yeah. Those are the two muscles. And, we, and you learned pancreas those today. primarily, uh, cycling. You learned both a stretch for each of those today, Eileen. Um, we are going to share the recording of this, uh, and I'm also yeah. going to add it to the blog post that's walking and hiking. So if you go to our blog, um, it would be under the, um, performance upgrade section. Len, um, when I think of the sort of walking, we may be talking about here, generally flat, gentle elevation. What is different if you are doing fair amount of uphill, downhill, uphill is pretty easy. Downhill can be hard on the knees. Uh, the idea, if you're going uphill, you want to just tilt your body on an angle that's equal to the incline. Yeah. Um, but like Sita said, downhill tends to, you know, if it's, it is a little harder on the knees. So uh, you want to change your hamstrings Means uh, stretch so that them. you can shorten. Because when you're going up, you're weight bearing, right? You're weight bearing. On the way down, there's not as much weight bearing. So the muscles contract less. So there's more 
impact on the joints. That's why going downstairs is harder than going upstairs generally. But you can think of it, you know, a lot of times when you're on a hike and you keep on changing the elevation of where you're walking, there's more movement there. So it's better than just walking flat straight on concrete for five miles. So you, so you have to keep on referring back to the initial, you know, thing that John talked about, about, you know, repetitive movements that don't have a lot to them are really hard on the body. Um, after these stretches, it feels like my torso is sitting lightly on top of the hips and the hips legs are loose and move with ease comfortable been having, um, been having hip sacrum pain and feels so much better. That's awesome. That's really good. So see you, you got a, a perfect example. This is terrific. I'm surprised at how great my body feels. That's awesome. Pat. Um, Diane, I took a slow walk twice this past week on my first walk. I had 82% fat burning 30 minute walk based on my Fitbit and 62 fat burning on my second walk, which was a 45 minute walk. So that's about kind of what you can expect. All right. So is that, have you walked before and you check your fat burning and you went faster and you had higher fat burning when you went slower. Is that what you said? Yeah. Can you clarify? Was it, it sounds like it was more fat when you went faster, more burning. Is that right, oh, okay. Diane? You burned more calories when you walked faster. Just, but can you put it in the chat, whichever it is, so we can get clear? Um, hamstring spasmed after the first stretch. What do we do? Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> uh, keep resisting and stretch right into the spasm where whatever muscle group it is, stretch that muscle group with resistance. So you might want to stay with the resistance, um, in, into the contraction because the spasm is a contraction. Uh, so Elizabeth's loving this quad stretch and in general, her mood goes up when she stretches. Diane's loving the quad stretch. Uh, this is a good one from Paula. I was recently diagnosed with left hip bursitis and PT says my glutes are weak on that side. Will these moves strengthen the glutes or do I need something else? Thanks. So bursitis in the hip. Uh, so that's, I'm um, imagining it's the hip joint. Um, and that would be pancreas and stomach quads and the medial hamstring. Uh, Gallbladder and brain, the IT band and the central hamstring go right through the glutes and they'll, that'll help strengthen your glutes. But I like bladder too. Bladder runs through the glutes too. Jane, are there good fascial stretches for the bottom of the feet to better integrate the feet and get the toes moving? I mean, we would have you more focus on the hamstrings, the bigger muscles that are regulating what happens at the foot. Like, yes, you could do stretches specifically for the foot. We have um, a video on it in our membership, but you're not going to get as big of a bang for your buck as if you just targeted those hamstrings. Well, feet in general, you know, brain and sexual as a pair help with feet and, uh, Stomach and pancreas also help with the feet. I don't know how you're experiencing them, but those two balancing pairs are nice for the feet. Um, so I love these questions. It, just so you guys know, live like walking and living and spending a lot of time with John is like being with a walking crazy person. There is not a walking scenario that he doesn't have big opinions about. And so Julie, uh, not Julie, uh, Ruby just asked, can you address walking in the sand on the beach? Oh, we sure can. <laughs> well, I think that's great. I mean, I'm hoping you're barefoot in the sand. Um, it helps to strengthen the legs a lot. helps to strengthen the feet. You know how like when you're on the beach and you walk away from the part that's wet, you know, you go to the part that's wet because it's easier. He does the opposite. He goes to the part that's dry. So why don't you tell us why, John? You know how you move away from the water to walk in that sand? Well, I get, first of all, I grew up at the Jersey Shore. I dare say they're the nicest beaches I've ever been on. So they have really, really soft, nice sand. And so I'm used to walking on the soft sand. And then when it would get wet and harder down by, you could walk. If you wanted to go for a walk, that's where you would walk. But we were just up in uh, the New England and the water down by the, uh, the sand down by the water, it was like concrete. Like I felt the impact going into my body. Like this isn't the beaches I used to grow up on. 
So it would depend on the hardness of the sand, but I would like, I like the softer sand. You go a little slower, your muscles are all contracting, your upper body's moving. It's kind of fun that way. I like it. So again, it kind of comes back to where we started with the more of your body that's involved, the better, which is why walking can be so detrimental, right? Well, you remember when we did the large intestine stretch, how the torso and the shoulder, yeah. you know, made that the body more involved. So flat feet, um, our arch supports a good thing. Um, pancreas stretch. Yeah. Pancreas stretches would be really good. I mean, we're not going to tell you don't wear your arch supports and be in pain, but it would be great if you could change the arch through medial hamstring stretches and then not need them. My arches have raised slightly, uh, noticeably, but slightly, and but when I do pancreas stretches, medial hamstring stretches. So Pat, um, yes, John keeps on referring to um, barefoot shoes. Vivo Barefoot is a company he likes. That's what he means when he keeps on saying three milli- milliliter or whatever. Well, that's their tagline, you know. But they, it's but it's basically really really low profile. They talk about something called proprioception that your feet still engage when the soul is three millimeters or less. I don't know. You know, uh, Carol, I put a tennis ball under my foot and press and roll back and forth. Very relaxing. Yeah. That you know, good. anything you like to do that gives you some relief is, is really good. Again, what we're always going to be focused on is root causes. That's why we make you stretch some of these big unfriendly muscles. Okay. Nola would these would love to add, would love these added to a spot in the membership there. Oh, they're absolutely in there. They are so in there. Um, I think there's, I'm almost certain there's a video. A walking flow. Oh, like a walking flow. I hear you. I'm, I mean, I know that in the membership, we have a video where we do just these three hamstrings as one. I could create a walking flow and just put them all together. That would be easy to do. Um, Aaron, I'm a licensed massage therapist. These classes have changed my whole game plan when doing body work. It's all about the hamstrings. You're so right, Aaron. And the work that you do. Oh my gosh more power to you. And yeah, keep Excellent. changing those hamstrings. Thanks for saying that. Keep it up. Great work. You know how hard it is to do. Um, Mary, Mary Jo, uh, Mary, what is the name of the shoe? It's Vivo, V-I-V-O barefoot. Um, I don't like them. They don't fit me. So they might not fit you, but there's a lot of low profiles shoes out there. They don't come in half sizes. That's why I don't like them. Um, Elizabeth, Aaron, this is awesome to hear. I'm going to tell my massage therapist. Uh, so is a shoe. See, everybody wants the shoe. It's not about the shoe, you guys. <laughs> it's what everybody wants. <laughs> the number of times I've overheard conversations with people talking about their new miracle sneaker and whatever. It's so not about the shoe. Well, if you have a low profile heel you'll help your hamstrings develop when you walk. So I get that, but there's other companies and I don't know the names of them, but. Okay. So is a shoe with an arch in it, not a good idea. Can I show you a shoe? I don't know. So um, it depends who you are and how you're thinking about it. John literally does not wear anything but Vivo barefoots. That's it. I wear other stuff. I mean, I have high heels. I have, I, I like New Balance. You know, I try and get flat ones so they don't have like a. They, they don't have teeny or they have arches just a little. And they, so I do well, try and have do that. Arches. Right. I mean, it, it really like when I tell you guys, it's good though. It's good to have him as a reference. He is like exhausted walking and and what you can do and your feet like it's a really big deal with him so we're well, kind of trying to look at the top runners on the planet like say division one uh running track programs um the book called born to run talks about the mexican tribes that run a couple hundred miles a day and they run in these flat little leather sole things there's no arch okay but when nike salesmen go to all the different universities to sell the latest nike running shoe that has the high heel the, the intense cushion stanford university always buys the cheapest nikes they can because they still want to get the nike money they still want to be sponsored by nike but they get the cheapest shoes that have the lowest profile the lowest heel and sprinters you know they they barely they you know there's barely anything on those there's they're thinner than my sneakers so the fastest runners on the planet to have no support at all 
They are not wearing off the rack running shoes. I can guarantee you that. Maybe some of these people are, but most of them aren't. Okay, here's a really great question from Lisi. Lots of comments about the value of walking poles. So if you're feeling embarrassed about getting walking poles, go for it. Um, here's Lisi. Walking was my favorite until I got back surgery. Now it's very difficult for me to walk because of neuropathy, pain in my legs and feet, feet and walking makes it worse. Mm -hmm. I use walking sticks, which helps putting less pressure. So I think I will try these stretches, see if it makes a difference. I would absolutely do that. I definitely think it will. Um, let's see, uh, Julie, my feet are totally different since doing hamstring stretches, adding the new stomach stretch. Eileen, what is the brand of, uh, so Elizabeth put Vivo's in the, um, thank you, Elizabeth in, in the chat, it's Vivo barefoot. Um, you know, I, I want to make a point at least just, uh, it's getting a little better with the poles. I worked with someone, um, on a track and, um, the person uh, was overweight and the feet hurt. And what we did was literally every half lap, we stopped and did those stretches, maybe just six, six, and six, okay, on each leg. And then we go, and we did about three or four laps. And she said, I, this is getting better and better the more I stretch. So she, we literally walked 200 yards, did a set of stretches, walked another 200 yards, did a set of stretches. So you can think of, and I love that idea of like, I'm trying to get the weightlifters to do that. You know, when they do a set of benches, do some lungs. You know, they do a set of militaries, do some thymus. Do a set of squats, do some hamstrings. You know, that's how I think it should be incorporated into your exercises. You know, a couple hundred yards, stretch, a couple hundred yards, stretch. Okay, Ruby is um, letting everybody know she's had a direct experience here. I can fully attest to cushion shoes and orthotics ruining your feet. I had plantar fasciitis for three years, went to three feet doctors, two PTs, did all of the massage stretches with tennis balls, water bottles, et cetera. None of this got rid of it. Only these stretches got rid of it. And then I also switched my shoes to zero drop foot shaped toes. So my toes could breathe. Yep. John's big on that and also have narrow feet. So I don't need wide toe boxes, but the shoes are the shape of my foot. I removed all orthotics and my feet have never felt better. Shoes, uh, the stretches are the answer and mm -hmm. the proper shoes that don't strangle your Another your little feet. anecdote, Phil Knight, who started Nike had a partner <laughs> and he was an Australian track coach. And he, you guys. he got the idea right away that these things are destroying your feet, injuring the athletes. He saw it firsthand in like 1970. He's like, I'm not involved. This is a bad idea. So he didn't get involved. He didn't become, you know, Phil Knight number two and make billions of dollars because he knew it was the wrong idea. He saw the injuries the athletes were getting from these high heeled running shoes, which we all did. But, you know, just as an aside. Okay, so this it's in the is book a, Born to Run. This is an interesting question that Ruby's asking. Do you recommend turning your knees and toes at an angle when walking down a hill mountain so we don't slip down loose gravel and to help the knees more? I mean, I think you want to do whatever you need to do to stabilize yourself, but we never recommend forcing the body into positions it doesn't want to be in. I think that's how I would answer that. Yeah, what about I, you? I don't know the answer, uh, Ruby. I, I think I, we would have to see you doing it to know what you're talking about. Um, I mean, I'd do anything I could not to fall. Oh, yeah. here's a question. I use this. This is Nancy. I use a single hiking pole switching off periodically between hands. So she uses one pole and goes back and forth between arms. Do you have a problem with that? Yeah, I don't know. I've okay. never used them, but I think I like to, I just feel like <laughs> do, 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 do. it just kind of looks cool and I have no problem with it. I, you know, um, I think it's helpful, especially mm. when you have inclines and things. more on walking poles. Do you recommend sometimes using one of those fascial massage guns? We recommend doing whatever makes you feel good. <laughs> okay. We stretch, we promote stretching. We feel like it's your biggest bang for your buck, but if something works for you, do it, do it. Um, uh, let's see. Diane, I have followed the fat burn before, and I'm not seeing a difference based on having slowed down. That's her point. She, it doesn't, she doesn't burn less calories when she slowed down. Okay. That's really cool. 
to know because that's what we're hoping. <laughs> and we're hoping that everybody will slow down their walking a little bit. Um, walk slow and you'll be able to walk longer. Uh, I work at a desk full time. I often get very itchy in my middle back. We would say do thymus stretches. Itchy in the middle back. Uh, could be, and pancreas might help too if it's in the rhomboids. Yeah, so you back. could try both of those, Eileen. Um, okay, let's see. Okay, that's a good question. Do you recommend those walking treadmills uh, for a standing desk office? I mean, periodically to break up the day, that's a good idea. Um, you know, just pay I mean, anything to change the position of the body um, for desk work, standing, then sitting. I'm sitting on this uh, swooper chair. We were just talking about it at class yesterday. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, no, you can, you know. What it see that it has the uh, rim there. And when you sit on it, you know, you don't have to, yeah, you don't. It bounces, it turns, it swivels. And it takes pressure off the spine. Legs are a little bit involved and you're moving. It feels great, actually. Um, I would recommend this chair if you're sitting at a desk. I recommend it if you're sitting at a table or anything like that. I mean, so, you know, getting so many questions about like what we recommend, what would you do to, like truly what we do is we try and pay attention to how things make us feel. Like you can feel, is it making your body feel better or worse? You know, you, there's so many things out there and John and I haven't tried 99% of them, you know? So you gotta kind of be your own, your own authority there. Um, let's see, Emery following a total hip replacement two years ago, my toes remain spread apart a bit. This makes the foot wide, wider and causes pain later in the day. Any stretches to help foot return to normal position? Um, more, oh, the feet, the, the toes, toes are, are wide. spread wider than they used to be making the foot wider. And she wants to return her foot to a normal position. The hamstrings, especially brain, central hamstring. Um, I mean, I, I would do all three hamstrings, but I think the brain will have the most impact on that. Um, so for instance, the pinky toe, the bladder, the lateral hamstring goes into that toe gallbladder the meridian on the for the it band on the outside leg goes into the second toe the big toe pancreas and liver go into and sexual and stomach go into the second and third toes um so those are the meridians and the muscle groups that go into those toes um but i would start with the hamstrings you know what i do if i have something like that and i'm working on it I want to know, I'll do one stretch for a couple of days and see the impact. And if I get a change, I'll keep going. If it doesn't work, I'll try a different muscle group. But my suggestion is you start with the hamstrings. That'll relax the foot and it should allow the toes to go back to where they were. Okay, we have a lot of questions, you guys. So I might skip over some. Um, let's see, Jane is putting two options for uh, low profile shoes, zero shoes and limbs. Mm -hmm. She put those in the chat. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Len likes Airbirds. Okay, Elaine. Tilting the stretches by the muscle is much more understandable than tilting. Oh, okay. You like us to say the muscle. Okay. Um, we can, we try and include all of it. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. That's the stool. Um, let's see, Carol, I've had knee pain and my doctor wanted to set up a replacement. I know it's not a bone thing. I know it's muscles and told him it sounds like start stretching your hamstrings and see what it does, Carol. That's what we would say. I would start with a lot of central hamstrings for your knee. We are going to save this one to the membership, Carrie. Mm -hmm. um, what is a good set number to do when walking? I think, I think again, so like, I mean, we, so if you're on a oh, walk, stretches. yeah, if you want, if you're on a walk and you want to stop and stretch, I would maybe do like a set of 10, but if you want to do more than that, cause something's really hurting you, you can. If I think you... three sets is like a nice goal, but that's a lot to do. Well, I mean, like if you're in the middle of a walk, be realistic, you're really going to do three sets. 
I would, anytime I would do 10 I've reps. Done that, anytime I've stopped, like in a, I remember walking to the subway, we had a 15 minute walk and sometimes my hip would hurt. I would just do a set of four or five or six of intensely highly resistive stretches for my hamstring just to give it a little relief. Yeah. So I think, you know, just a little bit, Elizabeth is going to help. Um, when I started with some more on shoes, when I started with my new Vibrams barefoot shoes 10 years ago, and then put on my old sneakers, I felt like I was walking in high heels, big difference. Yeah. It's so true. Glenda, John, can you do the stomach stretch one more time? Oh yeah. This is the quad, which is the stomach muscle group. It's on the front, front outside of the leg. So I'm going to put my right leg forward and I'm going to turn the right foot in a little bit, just a little bit. And the knee wants to be bent slightly at the start. It doesn't want to be straight. It's just a little slight bend. See how, and then the, see the distance between my front and back foot is, you know, over two feet there, thereabouts. Press that foot forward. Press that foot, front foot forward continuously as you move forward and relax on the way back. And I'm, you know, I'm going to use the, uh, the benefit of the chair to balance myself. Press the foot forward, press the foot forward, press the foot forward as you move forward and then relax on the way back. And again, you want to eliminate any substitution in your body. And one of the major areas we substitute is our ribs. Uh, sometimes the pelvis pitches forward. You want to sit it back. So this is the stomach stretched for the quad. So uh, Maricela is a retired PT, definitely recommending two poles to balance the two trunk poles. and in movement and prevent overwork on one side of the body. Mm -hmm. um, Paula, my horse taught me how to walk, take it in the hips, meaning wiggle hips side to side to take the impact off the knee. Um, Carrie feels like she walks too slow. Walk slow, the slower, the better. Um, let's see, Elizabeth went on flat areas. I use my poles very lightly. Um, are treadmills bad for your joints? I've been on treadmills, uh, post resistance stretching and I felt they impacted. The, yeah. Yes. The impact your joints. I, I, I found it very disruptive to my body. Why don't you talk about when you went to, was it soul cycle? Oh yeah. You know, you ride the bike, you put your feet in these like stirrups. Oh God. You know, cause my, my feet, one foot turns out, the other foot turns out a little, my knees are a little twisted. My legs turn out. So now you're putting your feet in. And don't they want you to lock them in? Lock them in. And so now I have to be symmetrical. I am not symmetrical. <laughs> it was like, it wasn't the right idea. I, I, I just was. Okay, Glenda, you know. yes, we will upload this to the membership and we will also put it on the blog post for walking and hiking. I uh, love this presentation. What meridian is in the heel? Isn't that primarily uh, Well, brain, brain, I think, runs underneath through the heel. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, what do you think of a stationary bike to strengthen my sore legs? Oh, totally. You, you know, you would um, add some change the resistance um to build up strength but I, I would again that's a great opportunity to mix in some resistance stretches for your hamstrings a little bit of bike a little bit of resistance stretching a little bit of bike um because see everything's in reference to something and i so your resistance stretch to get a better body or to address pain or things in your body but if you're a walker or you're a weightlifter or you're a gardener, is the activity getting better? Is it, are you getting stronger? Is sitting, getting up out of a chair easier? You know, you want to, um, cause th this whole thing about walking, we wanted you to get back in your body and see how it feels when you're walking. Um, so yeah. can you just clarify for the stomach stretch? Um, it, it, your back foot's on the ground, right? Yep. Yep. Paula, did I say uphill? Paul, when I was just giving the tips for what that Paula gave where you wiggle your hips, it's for downhill, which I knew in my head, but I easily could have said uphill. Um, really a wealth of things to think about. Len's th saying, I know. I mean, Len, when we lived in the city, I've never walked so much, obviously, in my life. And, you know, 
like so many of our posts on social media were subway stretches and stretch here. I mean, it was like nonstop. And John was like wanting to take out practical lawsuits with all the brownstones and the various kinds of concrete in front of each one of them. Like he became a complete professional assessor. So <laughs> the upgrades to these brownstones, they would put new concrete in. Some had the old slate from like the 1800s. Some had concrete. <laughs> Some had different concrete. Some had different concrete yet again. And the different concrete, like if you pay attention, you pay attention. Some concrete was brutally impactful for the knees and the hips and the feet. Some weren't, but they all had variations. So as I'm walking to the subway every day, I couldn't wait to hit the slate because that was like, you know, hardened clay that was soft, believe it or not. The asphalt walking across the street was soft, but the concrete was brutal. Yeah, but there was different levels of concrete. And really, but most of it was concrete going down Flatbush. Anyway, yeah, no, you, if you're paying attention and you pay attention, you pay attention, you're like, let me find a dirt trail to walk on. It's really, you know, that intense on the body walking on asphalt and I, I uh, so I don't know that things. we've heard of the Schwinn Airdyne bike. Have you heard of that? I heard of Schwinn. I had a Schwinn when I was a kid. Yeah, like as a bike company, but I think that's a special bike. I don't I don't yeah. know that we've heard of it. Um, Maricela. Yes, we will include the the Q and A. I won't cut it out. Um we'll, we'll look it up, the bike. Lisa, best stretch for knee pain, uh central brain. hamstring, brain marine. And sexual as a pair as well. So central hamstring and hip flexor. Uh okay, you guys. We have hit 221. This was obviously very informative. I thought it would, you know, poke the honeycomb a bit because we're all walkers. And you know, John and I, we love to challenge the status quo. <laughs> we love to do that. It was great to be with you, especially John, right? Um, I'm going to go put on my new balances that do have a little bit of cushion and we're going to take the dogs on a walk. <laughs> But we will upload this to the membership. I'll add it to the blog post and um, keep the questions coming. Yeah, and thanks we'll see for you all soon. your questions. Enjoy Thank you guys. You. Have a really good rest of your Sunday. We'll, we'll see, see ya. Bye. 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 -bye.